How do I win at this game? I should know. I mean, I've won before, but... Like, what do I actually do? Other than, you know, playing Tetris as well as I can. In fact, that's the entirety of my tactical mindset in Tetris 99. Play Tetris as well as I can. I'll often spend entire rounds of Tetris 99, rounds in which I'll do relatively well without touching the left or right thumbstick nearly at all. This game suffers, really, from three main strategic issues. First, the strategic aspects of Tetris 99 are very poorly communicated by the game. There is no tutorial, no instruction manual, no information at all outside of the names dedicated to your strategic decisions. Secondly, even if you do begin to understand what your strategic decisions mean, it's not clear in-game what's really happening. In my experience, if I decide to simply leave my right stick on randoms all game, and if I decide to specifically target attackers, badges, or KOs, is mostly the same. Which brings me to the third issue, which is that these strategic decisions even grasp fully and executed perfectly don't really seem to have that much of an impact. Mastery of Tetris 99, even at a strategic level, seems to be muddy, and it'll be interesting to see as this game grows how strategies develop, if they develop at all. You know, I find it interesting how the recent uptick in the Battle Royale genre, which had some roots back in the early part of this decade, but exploded really with the releases of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and Fortnite in 2017, has led to a sort of new wrinkle in gaming discourse. There's a sort of Battle Royale lexicon that can be and is reflected into Tetris 99. Indeed, Tetris 99 was described practically from its announcement on the February 14th Nintendo Direct as basically, what if Tetris were made into a battle royale, prompting a flood of where we drop it jokes. And while I generally skew away from battle royale games, I found Tetris 99 a little easier to understand because of this thread by at Colin D. Dwyer on Twitter. Dwyer's use of recently made traditional battle royale concepts as a lens for understanding Tetris 99 is interesting to me as a student of rhetoric. These ideas, these terms, in the middle of 2016 probably wouldn't make sense to map to a game like this. Ideas like circle closing and dropping weren't popular in gaming discourses then. They had no reason to really be used at all because there wasn't a game it could completely be mapped to. But it's interesting how those metaphors from games whose histories are based in third-person open-world games can apply so smoothly to what is effectively a massively multiplayer puzzle game. It's not much of a stretch to expect Tetris to be the first massively multiplayer tile match puzzle game purely because Tetris has the best name recognition of any tile match puzzle game, short of maybe Bejeweled. But the thing I don't understand from a standpoint of making an effective multiplayer tile match puzzle game is why it was Tetris that had to become the first massively multiplayer tile match puzzle game. Because there are other tile match puzzle games that fit better into having another player. As I've been playing this game, I've been comparing it primarily to Super Puzzle Fighter 2 in that sense, because that is, in my opinion, the best example of a multiplayer tile match puzzle game. There's a lot of strategy involved and a necessity that you keep an eye on what your opponent's up to before you make certain decisions. And that game is so strong at this because it's based in being a multiplayer experience. There is no solitary version of Super Puzzle Fighter 2. But I'd argue that Tetris is one of the best solitary gaming experiences ever created, and I'm including that alongside games like Klondike Solitaire, Jigsaw Puzzles, and hitting a tennis ball against your garage door. Knowing Tetris as, like, a paradigmatic example of solitary gaming kind of makes it difficult for the game to be a great multiplayer experience. The way that Tetris becomes a multiplayer game in Tetris 99 is via added lines on the bottom, triggered by another player scoring points, lines which can be cleared as they all have one gap somewhere in them. If done right, one can immediately counter a few lines of attack with a long piece. But if you get caught at the wrong moment, or with too powerful of an attack, it'll ruin you. My issue with this is that this mechanic is so clearly tacked on to Tetris, and everyone knows it because everyone's played Tetris before. It's the double-edged sword of Tetris 99. A game like this at this scale would only really be successful with the Tetris name, game, and gravitas. Like, I couldn't really imagine Poyo Poyo 99 or something similar pulling the number of casual players in that Tetris 99 has pulled, even though 
that game is at its ground level far better suited for multiplayer competition. But Tetris could not easily transition into being a multiplayer experience because it's so well cemented culturally as a solitary one. It's fine, but knowing that the Battle Royale sort of metagame could be matched better, for instance, tactical moves could be made with more intention, with a game designed originally to be a multiplayer experience, kind of changes how I view this game. Tetris 99's existence as a game of Tetris where you're also being apparently bombarded by others reminds me of that bullshit in Guitar Hero 3 when they introduced that battle mode where it was like Guitar Hero still but your opponent could throw some dumb shit at you in the middle of the game to like flip the note highway thing around or obscured it or whatever and it turned Guitar Hero from a rhythm game into a rhythm game, sorry, not a rhythm game, into like a weird pseudo fighting game that I didn't want to play but all the kids in the church youth group knew that game and even though I'd been playing Guitar Hero since the original on the PS2 in 2006 and it was way better since I was older and I'd been playing it longer and since I didn't know the battle mode rules and stuff that that little kid fucking Cole Wheeler who was like seven years old he totally destroyed me and I'm still bitter about it just let the game speak for itself Christ man just have a good game is let me play it right next to someone else it can be like golf or gymnastics or bowling or weightlifting or whatever those sports are great and competitive and the bowlers and the golfers aren't like throwing rocks at each other while they're taking their swings or whatever holy shit Actually, Tetris 99 has introduced me partially back into one of my favorite types of online multiplayer. Namely, the online multiplayer games where the player is mostly solitary, but competing against a big group of other people playing their also mostly solitary game. Okay, specifically, Tetris 99 made me remember 1 vs. 100, which ran on Xbox Live between 2009 and 2010. What a weird, fun experiment that was. It was like a trivia game with a person-to-person -person chat room where you could just, like, talk to each other while you answered questions about which city houses the largest stadium in the world and who's starting Cannonball Run 2, or whatever. Functionally, there was little need for this to really be a multiplayer game. I mean, it's not like we were going to necessarily influence each other or anything, but it was kind of nice knowing that me, a little teenager in Olathe, was answering the same trivia question as hundreds of others around the globe. I think HQ Trivia gets at the heart of that as well. That's kind of what I get out of Tetris 99 too, though. Since your strategic actions are so limited in effect, you get a sense that while we're battling each other, the real enemy is time and the constant dropping of pieces, affecting each of us at the same rate over time, a constancy to which we will all succumb. And Tetris had become a sort of multiplayer experience for me before Tetris 99 came out, actually. I remember years ago, maybe a decade ago at this point, the proliferation of a game called Tetris Friends, an original Tetris game that came out with Facebook integration at some point in the last part of the aughts. I was amazed at the time how well the trait of being really good at Tetris cut through a cross-section of my 8th grade class. There was no single group of people, the math club kids, the orchestra kids, the band kids, the volleyball players, the swim team, the Christians that lay specific claim to Tetris dominance via Tetris friends. Seemingly anyone could come in and place a high score in those junior high school leaderboards right next to the people they'd have no reason to ever associate with. Tetris, for a minute there, was the true egalitarian trait. The best thing about Tetris 99 is that it hits this sort of sweet spot. It's free, it's a game practically implanted in our brains from the first time we pick up a Game Boy, download our first smartphone apps, or get on the Flash game sites that weren't yet caught by our high school's content filters, and, well, it's as easy to comprehend as it needs to be. As Fortnite did last year, I'm hoping that Tetris 99 breaks through the zeitgeist and becomes a cultural work. It's hard enough that your victories feel earned. And it's simple enough to make you feel like you really have a shot every time you start up. It also hit on the serendipitous. Before its announcement, I don't really know how many people expected a Tetris Battle Royale, but now that it's here, I'm really grateful that we have it. 
Over the past few weeks, I was struggling with this question that I don't like to struggle with. What am I really doing with video games anymore? I was spending time half-mindedly playing FIFA during breaks while watching TV shows and YouTube on a laptop in front of me, and was reacting with revulsion at every new thing that seemed to pass in front of me. Like, I downloaded that Apex thing in the new Titanfall game, like, I got through one game and it just accepted that it wasn't gonna be my shit. And so many things feel like they're just not my shit anymore, to the point where I start to wonder, like, what is my shit? But getting the chance to play Tetris against the rest of the world? I don't know. That might be my shit. That's something I'm so glad to have experienced. Getting to see my friends post their top scores on Twitter has been cool too. Sort of reminded me of those old Tetris friend leaderboards. That's kind of why I love gaming. Getting everyone to try so hard to do something well, looking through failure after failure before the perfect run hits and victory awaits. Now, the worst thing about this game is that there's only one piece of music. Like, that's it. It's just the one song. It's just Korobayenki Bayaniki. Korobayaniki looped. It's Korobayaniki. 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 It's just Korobayaniki looped on and on and on and on. And, like, I know that's accurate to every version before this, but that's, like, my least favorite track of the original Tetris games. And really, to hear this, like, EDM version of a classic Russian folk song over and over and over again, it's going to drive me to fury. Or at least it's going to drive me to pay $2.99 for an extra music track once the microtransactions come around. And no, I will not mute my television.